Mary is a successful writer who's forced to release a new book, and not having time to spend with her children, she needs to hire a babysitter. But when she thinks she's found the most suitable candidate, it turns out that things are not as they seemed, and everything ends up getting complicated. That's why today on The Summarizer, Deadly Illusions. The film begins with Mary having breakfast with her children when her husband Tom appears there, who says goodbye to everyone and then leaves for work. And after Mary takes her kids to school, she's visited by two people at her house. The point is that these turn out to be two of her publishers who propose to write a new book, giving her a sealed envelope with the offer, but Mary uses her psychic fortune teller skills to reject the offer without looking at the envelope, saying goodbye to the two publishers. When night falls, Tom returns from work and does what his wife should have done, so he opens the envelope to see the offer the publishers brought to her, and we see a huge sum of money. Then, after doing it, Tom confesses to Mary that he fell again for another pyramid scam, losing much of his savings, making Mary immediately regret turning down the offer to write. The next day, Mary tries to have a relaxing day at the spa, but her friend Elaine interrupts her tranquility by talking about the possibility of accepting the offer, and Mary doubts the idea, confessing what makes her right. I turn into a different person. Then, Elaine recommends to her a VIP babysitter agency, explaining that they only work with girls of good level and preparation, so Mary ends up accepting and visits the luxurious offices on her own. So there, our protagonist receives the possible candidates for the position at her house. But when it seems that none of them are to Mary's liking, another girl just appears pedaling a bicycle in front of her house, saying that she also comes from the agency of babysitters. Immediately, Mary invites her in and asks her to sit down, and when she's about to serve her tea, she finds her reading a book causing a great impression on her. Then, Mary has to answer a call and leaves Grace alone, who begins to browse the library until the children come home, arguing, but Grace immediately gets involved and calms down the situation. And as Mary was watching everything from afar, she ends up accepting her as her babysitter. And that's how Grace's first day of work arrives, and since she has to act as a lifeguard at the pool, Mary lends her a flashy swimsuit. And it just happens happens to be from the cover of a Playboy swimsuit magazine. And just at the best moment, Tom arrives at the house, meeting Grace for the first time. Then at that moment, Elaine begins to insinuate a possible infidelity to Mary, but she denies the possibility, while Grace comes out of the pool looking like a magazine model. The next day, Grace is tidying up things in the kitchen, until she hears a scream and runs out, and then finds Mary in the bathroom with her injured foot. So Grace begins to heal her, and there Mary realizes that Grace is not wearing a bra, so she invites her to go shopping. The point is that they arrive at a store and Mary accompanies Grace while they try on the bras, giving her advice to take advantage of her youth while they start to get too close. Later that night, Mary talks to Tom about the possibility of cosmetic surgery. Then Tom tells her what really turns him on the most about her. What I find most exciting, your brilliance. And so they get romantic again, until they're interrupted by Grace, playing the role of a mother who goes into her son's room without knocking on the door, just to say that she'll be late tomorrow. The next day, Mary is half blocked from writing, so she starts walking around her mansion, and finds Grace trying on clothes, and stares at her for a long time. So much that she doesn't realize at what point she got to be reunited with her editors. But instead of listening to suggestions for her book, Mary continues to fantasize about Grace in highly suggestive ways. Later in the gym, Mary tells her fantasies about the babysitter to Elaine, who suggests a possible explanation for her. You're probably just sex starved. After this, Mary returns home and finds Tom talking to Grace, but since she was thinking dirty things all day with his babysitter, she forgot that they had a gala dinner, so they prepare to leave, leaving Grace to take care of the children. The point is that as soon as they get into the car, Tom begins to suggest the idea of doing it between the three of them, including Grace. We should make her more a part of the family. And without Mary answering anything, they arrive at the dinner where Elaine is waiting for them, along with her husband, who can't resist the urge to tweet spoilers and ask Mary about her book. But she replies that she only feels inspired when she's in dark moments, so Elaine's husband gives her some advice. Lean into the dark. That's where your best stuff is.
The next day, Mary's sitting in front of the pool, and when Grace shows up, she asks her to rub suntan lotion on her back to end up jumping together in the pool. Then they go into the house and have their own crazy party with music and alcohol, and when they get tired of dancing, they both sit on a couch, and Grace ends up getting sentimental and opens her heart to Mary, thanking her for everything. More at home. Thereupon, Mary falls asleep and wakes up from the kisses that Tom gives her, but immediately we realize that it's Grace who is still with her until she wakes up again and it turns out that she was alone on the couch. But when, at another time, during a concert of the boys, Mary asks Grace to forget what happened, Grace says she doesn't remember anything and Mary decides to leave the situation as it is. On another day, when Mary gets into the bathtub, Grace appears with a cup of tea and a pot full of flower petals. So she pours the milk, a magic powder and the petals over the bath water, then she brings the spoon to Mary's mouth treating her like a baby, and finally she begins to massage her in a suggestive way. But suddenly Grace ends up disappearing, not knowing if she left at the speed of light before finishing the massage, or if Mary's going crazy. The point is that, anyway, Mary starts with her writing process, while Tom takes the opportunity to ask Grace out to have lunch together. But just at that moment, Elaine discovers them, and believing she has the scoop of the century, she tries to tell Mary who can't attend her because she was writing. So Tom and Grace have lunch together, and after that, they start flirting. She asks him how old he thinks she is, to which Tom replies, Well, two weeks ago I would have said 20. And Grace can't believe how bad he is at guessing ages. What? And so a few weeks go by, and Mary and Grace go for a bike ride, arriving at a lake in the forest, and they stop for a picnic. Then Mary begins to recite the lyrics of a romantic reggaeton of Bad Bunny, which ends up having an effect and they start kissing, but out of nowhere, and without explanation, they stop doing it. But when they approach the bikes, they discover that their wheels were cut, so they ended up returning to the mansion at night, discovering Tom talking to Elaine, who approaches Mary and takes the opportunity to communicate her suspicions, asking her a question question that ends up confirming that she's a woman with only one idea in her head. When was the last time you were intimate with Tom? But Mary ignores her and begins to accuse Elaine of wanting to steal her husband. So, finding herself concerned, Elaine decides to leave. Later, Mary shows Grace how to cut an avocado in half, and then Grace gives her a taste of chili by bringing a spoon to Mary's mouth again. And right away, when Mary starts talking about her wedding anniversary, Grace approaches to her and becomes affectionate again, crouching behind the counter to give her another suggestive massage, until they're almost caught in the act when Tom and the kids show up. Then Mary excuses herself, saying, she feels bad and goes to bed to rest, but she immediately wakes up hearing some typical adult movie dialogues. So curious, she gets up to find out where they come from and ends up finding Tom with Grace, recreating a scene out of the shades of grey, causing Mary to faint. The good thing is that when she recovers, Mary sits down to dinner with her whole family and Grace, and as soon as they settle down to eat, Mary starts screaming reproachfully at our interesting babysitter. Fucking! Mary! Over there! On the counter! But it seems that Mary didn't realize that her children were listening, and so she tries to excuse herself by saying that the writing has her stressed out and things like that. Anyway, when they're in their room, Mary keeps blaming Tom for her financial mistake that ended up leading them to that situation, until Tom manages to calm her down with a simple sorry. Things go on as if nothing happened, and they go to sleep. During that night, Mary goes for a night walk while Tom realizes and takes advantage of the fact that he has more space to sleep comfortably in bed. And the next day, Mary calls the babysitter agency to double check for her payment, and so she ends up discovering that there isn't really a girl named Grace working there. So Mary goes to the library to ask about the book Grace was reading the day they met, and then tries to contact Elaine to tell her what she just found out. The thing is, Elaine doesn't answer her phone, and so Mary goes on her own to the office where her friend works. But when she arrives at the office, she first finds everything very quiet, and then a pool of blood on the floor, and finds Finally, Elaine's corpse with scissors through her neck. After calling 911, Mary's taken to the police station where she's interrogated as a possible suspect in the crime, since several clues point to her. Firstly, the scissors have her fingerprints on them. The evidence is all pointing one way. Secondly, they found footage of a woman dressed in the same coat that Mary's wearing entering Elaine's office at the time of the crime. That could 
could be anyone. And finally, they found a manuscript of the book where supposedly what is written coincides with what really happened. No, this does not make sense. Until Tom arrives with the lawyer and takes her out of the interrogation. But to complicate things, he tells her that she was out of bed for three hours and that the knife with which the bicycle wheels were cut off has the fingerprints of Mary. Then Tom asks her since when she stopped going to therapy with Elaine as they found a handwritten note indicating a possible diagnosis that explains Mary's strange behavior lately. But she doesn't answer and ends up leaving. While Tom, concerned, calls someone saying he he wants to help her. The point is that Mary goes to Grace's hometown, and without the help of any GPS, incredibly, quickly she finds the house where the girl grew up, where she's attended by a woman who talks to herself and mistreats her dog, but who still gives her valuable information to reveal Grace's origin. And so, by means of flashbacks, we learn how Grace did to end up working as a babysitter, listening to Mary's conversation at the spa, and stealing her information from the offices while she was being interviewed. As Mary drives back to the house, Tom takes a shower until suddenly we see a woman dressed in Mary's coat taking a knife and slowly approaching. When Tom comes out of the shower, we see that it is none other than Grace who begins to threaten him with the knife, and so Tom tries to defend himself, but the girl activates her ultra instinct and ends up leaving him dying on the floor. Just at that moment, Mary returns to the mansion being received by Grace with changed clothes, who does not try too hard to prevent Mary from discovering Tom dying in the bathroom. Bathroom. But Tom doesn't tell her who attacked him either. Instead, he begins to apologize until Grace arrives and starts cleaning up, crying and saying that she tried to stop someone. To which Mary asks who, and Grace replies, Me, you cunt. And then Grace starts chasing Mary around the house while having conversations with herself in the Spider-Man's Green Goblin style. When she finally corners Mary, this time Grace's ultra instinct fails and she gets hit by a flower pot, falling to the ground by the blow and then recovering her sweet and calm personality, crying in Mary's arms. Sometime later, life for the Morrison family returns to normal and Mary goes to visit Elaine at the cemetery, leaving some good advice for those with writer's block. All I needed was to get my my ass kicked out the door. And right away she goes to visit Grace, who's locked up in a psychiatric care, so she gives her some books and they start playing cards very happy. But in the end, a woman ends up leaving the building dressed in a very familiar way. That was Deadly Illusions. Comment which series or movies you'd like me to summarize for future videos, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss our next video. See you later!